Of course, the holidays coming up, you might be getting your shopping done. You might want to have something to actually record the family as they're opening up their presents. Don't want to use the phone. Maybe use a prosumer type camera. And you're looking up on Amazon, you're seeing all these deals, and you're seeing a lot of these, these brands that you don't know the names of, um, but you, you want to get something that's not going to break the bank. So what do you get? We're going to take a look at this one. This is from Kick Tech. This is the 4K Ultra HD camera. Comes with a onboard microphone, and we're going to take a look at that next on Geekazine. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine, Think Magazine, Put in the Geek, you got me, and today we are taking a look at this, the digital video camera 4K from a company called Kick Tech. I chose this one simply because it was tagged as an Amazon choice. First of all, I do have to mention that this camera is not specific to Kick Tech. In fact, if you do go further down that Amazon rabbit hole, you will see other companies with camera and microphone or camera and light bundles and it's going to be the same exact model camera this model is the hdv 534 km model it's pretty comparable to something that you would get in uh, 2012 2013 very plastic but it is pretty sturdy it just feels like uh some of the earlier uh, handy cams that i've purchased on my own for doing videos like this Inside, you can go up to 4K technically. It's actually 2880 by 1440, otherwise known as 1440p, uh, or I guess you'd say 4KI. Uh, if you're not sure, that's okay. It, basically, it's not true 4K. You'd end up putting it into an editor and stretching it out to 4K, and it would work that way. It also only does 24 frames a second in 4K. Even if you get the, the capture of all those pixels, it's gonna go 24 frames a second. So watching the ocean pass by is gonna be a little bit choppy and not as smooth as if you'd see, let's say, a 1080p at 60 frames a second. With that said, you can do 2K at about uh, 30 frames a second, and you can do 1080p in 60 frames a second, which will look a lot better. The, the, the sensor inside is a 13 megapixel CMOS sensor. Once again, this is a technology from about 2012. It's also meant for small devices. So your, your tablets, your webcams, your phones, all of these would have this 13 megapixel sensor, CMOS sensor in there. So they're just basically putting it around a prosumer camera case, which not too bad. I mean, you get some good functionality out of it. They do have a lot of uh, good features in here, like nightlight function in it. So if you low light and you want to take a video of your baby sleeping or something like that, then you can do so. It does have photo uh, feature of up to 48 megapixels. So you can take a picture with this or you can take video. And of course, uh, putting in a card, there's actually takes uh, SD cards and the TF cards, the smaller uh, SD mini cards. I did a full unboxing over at my group, Wirecast Pros on Facebook, showing you everything that you get. Let's get into the review. First of all, we'll talk about the microphone because this is the easiest. The microphone actually does have a connection between the camera and here. It's not a shoe connected. Uh, microphone so you need a cable basically I don't have it attached here because it was easier to move things around but this microphone actually runs in with a low shelf filter it's got a plus 20 DB boost and a minus 10 DB retraction so in whatever situation you should be able to get some good sound from this so we're at the st uh, Madison Wisconsin state capital um, right behind me is Wisconsin's Liberty Bell uh, that was presented to Wisconsin. We are in 2K mode and using the Wi-Fi to connect uh, for the cameras. No microphone. I still have to pull that out of the box. I'm pretty impressed with how this mic works. It's the camera itself that I'm not really too impressed with. Like I said, this is this is, would be a camera you would get, a webcam you would get around 2012, 2013. The features that I do like about it, the battery is I can find batteries easily. However, you can't find a battery more than 2,500 milliamps. So if you're looking to do a lot of recording without a plug, then you'll have to have a lot of batteries fully charged. Charging doesn't uh, take too long to do, only a few hours but it does keep the charge and uh, I've, I've had this camera running for uh, at least an hour 
outside of being plugged in and it worked really well. By plugging in, it's basically a USB connection. So if you've got a USB charging device, uh, you know, portable charging device, you can plug that in and keep it charged as you go. It does have an HDMI mini out so you can plug it into a TV and see how how it's recording or projected out to the public or whatever you need it to do. Features inside of here, there is uh, there is some slight stabilization features, but I haven't really seen them to be really great. In photo mode, you actually have the lines uh, that pop up that can uh, that's supposed to focus in your face rather than the background. But I'm finding a lot of photos and a lot of videos a little bit blurry to what I've seen uh, high-end cameras do. A photo with a lot of daylight will come out a lot better than indoors or anything with low light. Biggest problem I've found is the SD cards. I was putting in different types of SD cards and some of them were working with the camera, some of them were not working with the camera. And that's a, that's a big problem when it comes to stuff like this because you go and you buy the best SD card for your camera so it'll capture everything. And then if that SD card doesn't work, then what's the point of paying that much for the SD card? So I found that getting something a couple years old in SD card could still be class 10. Something that's less than 128 gigabytes in size for your SD card will go in here and you'll be able to record up to 4K. Otherwise, uh, some of the SD cards will actually freeze the whole camera. And you don't want that happening, especially if you're out there shooting something. The camera does connect up to Wi-Fi into your phone using their special app, which once again, if you went to the other manufacturers, it'd probably be the exact same app. That actually works really well. When you see it on the phone, it might be a little bit behind where you are. So you definitely want to give it a little bit of time to let it catch up to you for photo and video. And of course, when you hit that button for recording video, you'll notice that uh, it'll start to record and then you'll capture that, that beginning part, which is not a big deal. You just do a fix it in post editing. USB connection does a couple different things. One is it turns it into a webcam, surprise, surprise. And then of course, the other thing is to use it as a storage device so you can transfer your files over to the, to the computer. It records MP4 files. So expect MP4 compression off of your videos, no MOV or anything like that. So it's going to capture and it's that, that's going to definitely compress the video uh, before you even touch it in post editing. In all, the camera does the job. So if you're trying to capture something, you don't want to use your phone. Maybe you want to give it to the kids to do some recording. Expect a lot of shaking, expect a lot of if they're holding it with their hands. Is a vlogging camera probably not the best vlogging camera out there for the price. As for a PC streaming device, I did hook it up to the special software, but it doesn't hook up into any of the other programs that I use. I did hook up the HDMI to a capture card and it does capture it. However, if you have this plugged in and capturing, the display will actually flash the charging symbol in this corner right here. So that means that you either have to edit that out or just live with the charging or unplug it so you can just completely get rid of the display. So in all, I, I give it about two to two and a half to three stars uh, for this review, but this is meant for low cost. Uh, Amazon, I bought it on Amazon for $149. I didn't realize that was a special going on. It's now at $221. And it, of course, it comes with the microphone. It comes with the uh, fisheye lens, which is also, it's a fisheye lens and a macro lens. So you can get close up shots. And then of course you can get the whole shot, at, like I said, as a vlogging type situation. But for $221, I think I can find a camera that will do a lot better job, won't need this. And of course, I'll have to figure out the microphone from there because it will have a microphone jack input on some of those cameras. Those cameras also will be about five, six years old, um, but I run cameras five, six years old in my studio and they work perfect. And that's what I look for is something that's going to give me a decent picture and work well, not have to worry about the cards or anything like that. So you're going to, you're going to be on your own if you, if you decide to get this camera, but it does say, Amazon does say that it's the best deal out there. And it might be the best deal out there, 
but it might not be the best camera out there. And it's simply because of the brand of camera, and then there's nothing that KickTech can do about it. They just bought a whole bunch of cameras and put it in with a bundle. So that's it. This is the KickTech camera with the microphone bundle, uh, two batteries, and of course the uh, the fisheye lens, a macro lens as, as you go. Uh, what do you think? Do you have this camera? Tell me what you think. Are you getting this camera? Let me know by tweeting me over at Geekazine, geekazine at gmail.com. And of course, uh, you can follow me on the socials, youtube.com forward slash geekazine. Go ahead, like, subscribe, comment down below. And until next time, you guys geek out. And when I find the right camera at the right price that will be perfect for streaming and vlogging and everything like that, I will definitely be talking about that as well. Thanks a lot and geek out.